Good morning. Welcome back. You're watching Daybreak on Citizen Television and thank you for staying with us and uh, we appreciate your time and company. It's worth it therefore. Thank you. Professor Alfred Omenya is a commentator on social political development. Gabriel Mudoma <coughs> also is a commentator on social political development. Thank you, gentlemen. Your time is all appreciated. You, and good morning to you. A lot happened yesterday at the Mo International Sports Center, Kasarani, the handing over of power by the immediate former president, Uhuru Kenyatta, to President Dr. Samoy William Ruto. And let's begin, Daniel, with you. G Gabriel, with you, I beg your pardon. And on the appointment of the judges, there are some constitutional items that the f uh, president had out outlined. And, and this is also a pledge that he made 39 days before polling day on the 9th of August. That was on the implementation of uh, the Constitution 2010. Looking at the action by the president to appoint and swear in six judges that will be happening today, as itemized in his inaugural speech, Daniel, does it point to a government that is committed to the principles of good governance and constitutionalism? Ayub, thank you. And again, uh, good morning to our viewers. First of all, you know, as they say, elections are the heart of every democracy. Mm -hmm. And what we witnessed yesterday was a critical part of uh, what our constitution stipulates. Uh, the new leadership is at dawn. And uh, like uh, William Ruto has been saying on uh, his campaign trail, as president, those are some of the things that he will put in place immediately. These are things like you said, the days when he promised he would do, mm -hmm. he did them yesterday in full glare of everybody. It shows not only a commitment, but it shows somebody who has kept his word. Now, when you come to the, these judges, you know the pushing yeah. and pulling that has been there. And uh, I think they've already been gazetted. That's how fast it went. And so uh, I think in the next few days, they'll take up their roles as a uh, you know, it has again been stipulated. Yeah. And uh, the commitment level, it's not the only uh, key thing that I'll look at. Uh, yes, there is commitment, but it also shows that there's somebody who has hands on deck. That is something you need in new leadership because it also uh, creates that uh, mentality of I said I will do. Okay. It's not only a commitment, my hands are on deck, it's something that I promised, I'll fulfill it. And I'm liking the very fact that he did it immediately. Okay. Those are some of the things I think if, if, if he puts his mind into it, uh, not only the judiciary, but he also saw what he did uh, on, the, uh, on the police. Yep. Mm -hmm. Immediately he started it, various rafts that are key to, you know, to, to keeping in line with the promises that he made on the campaign. To remember Ayub, we've always had an issue about um, the spoken word, okay. the spoken promise. Nilisema mm -hmm. nintafanya. Uh, immediately somebody comes in it becomes, it's pushed under the fluffy rag of forgetfulness. This is not what has happened. Mm -hmm. The calls, like people are saying, okay. orders from above. I think they have, they've come to an end. Okay. With now the IG of police becoming the accounting officer. That is something I never thought, Prof, I would see in our generation. That is what I call a foot or a step in the right direction. Okay, and, and that's just a minutiae uh, representation of the 66 page document that uh, the uh, president at that time, the deputy president had uh, called the plan for the country when he launched his manifesto on the 30th of June. Uh, Prof, then I come to you. It's the case of judges um, Agriam Chalule, Weldon Korir, Jojo Dunga, Joel Ngugi, uh, Eliz Elizabeth Omange and Evans Makori. Does it point then to emboldening certain institutions that were given birth to courtesy of Katiba 2010? And does it in another, from another perspective also show commitment from the new president and going forward, how will that be gauged as to how his relations will be with independent institutions in the country? Yes, I think, uh, uh, thanks Ayub. And uh, again, uh, uh, to, to echo the sentiments of Gabriel, um, yeah, the, the president, uh, you know, started on, on, a, on a very strong note. Uh, in fact, we're just saying that uh, uh, this is very unusual mm -hmm. for an inaugural uh, speech of a president. Okay. You know, a long detailed uh, uh, um, speech with action uh, immediately. So I think that is really something that uh, is wonderful for Kenyans. Uh, if the president continues, uh, uh, you know, with, with that pace of doing things. And, and it, just, it wasn't just about the speech. There, there are a lot of actions that happened yesterday, as, mm -hmm. as uh, Mutuma has already, uh, you know, highlighted some of them. Um, the second bit is really that um, uh, we need to look at this uh, judiciary action mm -hmm. in relation to a number of, um, um, you know, uh, 
sort of statements across the entire president's speech okay. that spoke to strengthening institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, he made reference to the IGU police. Um, of course, we had uh, uh, issues around uh, around the judiciary itself and uh, and how that is. Um, that is that is being uh, tackled. He made uh, references to the office the, of the Auditor General okay. and the office of the Control of Budget. Um, yeah. So um, um, and, uh, and and a few others actually. Yes, I, th I think what is interesting is that um, while it didn't seem obvious that mm. this would be the president that would be protecting the independence of the institutions, okay. uh, right from uh, it seemed like it was talk. Um, he talked about uh, you know effective oversight of parliament, for example, amongst others. Yes, so I think this is really a very good, um, a very good uh, starting point for him, and, and and starts to make us trust him and his promises. Um, starting with the judiciary, of course. Uh, remember, I mean, the judiciary fund <coughs> had has never been uh, signed. It was just signed uh, a week ago, okay. and uh, nine billion was put there. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, fine, uh, I'm adding another three billion so that this institution can actually be independent. Um, these judges, whom uh, they were not, they were not appointed, and no good reason was actually given. All right. Um, he comes in, and on day one, you know. Um, he does it so that the swearing in is exactly happening today. Mm -hmm. So I think there are very many good signs mm -hmm. in the president's speech that is starting off on a, on a, on a very strong note, particularly on uh, on support of uh, independent institutions. And I think that's, that's the, the right way to go. Okay, Gabriel. Then, in terms of what we had as frost relations between the executive and judiciary Correct. coming against the backdrop of the Supreme Court's invalidation yes. of President Uhuru Kenyatta's re-election. We have seen the, what some had called a front, some calling for the resignation of uh, then Chief Justice Emeritus David Kenani Maraga, and then the slash of the judiciary fund to operationalize its functions across the country. Is it a pointer to good relations between the executive arm of the government and the judiciary going forward of Martha Kome? And how will this then further deepen the constitutional, I mean, institutions in the country in terms of how they can take or go about their responsibilities? Ayub, that's an amazing question. And I'll, uh, I'll take you from, um, in fact, I'll take you back to Maraga's final interview, if you may, if you may remember. And I think, I, I, don't, I don't remember, I don't think it was this media house that did that interview, but the interview I remember is his final, his parting shot was, what will you remember this president? And that was the former president, Uhuru Kenyatta. Do you remember his words? They were quite sharp. They were very firm. And uh, I, was, I was taken aback. Wow, would, would the former CJ, would, did he need to say that? Because he said, I remember him as a president who was never following the law. Mm -hmm. And if you may recall, are the court orders that were not being followed, they were all over. So after that, I want to tease you in, Ayub, with what the current president, William Ruto, took when he took the floor at Bomas. Key among the concerns that he had yes. in BBI mm -hmm. was the separation, total separation of the executive and the judiciary. And when it brought the issue of the ombudsman who was yes. being hired or who was being brought in from the executive, he took a very serious hit on it because he said it was a derogation because the executive would have had a firm hand in controlling the, uh, the judiciary. Okay. Immediately, right after Bomas, it actually became his campaign mantra when he started saying that the best thing we can do for our judicial system mm -hmm. is operationalize the judicial the fund. Judicial fund. Okay. And I can tell you, you had, it was key among the stipulations that he made right. yesterday. So I think what uh, President William Ruto Key among the things that he feels should happen in this country is to ensure that there's no more arm twisting of this independent institution. Okay. As a matter of fact, this is not something that just came up. This is not something he walked into Kasarani with. Mm -hmm. It is something he started talking about uh, when he started, you know, when he went to Bomas during the BBI launch. And uh, he has kept that on the campaign trail. So what it tells you is judiciary must not only rise above that nuance of we must look back to the executive. It must be separational of duties totally. Their functions must be supreme okay. because at the end of the day, the institution that makes or breaks a country is the judiciary. Okay, Prof. Gabriel, when you point out 
the plan, for example, that uh, the president had during the, the campaigns. Recently, he was uh, giving a wise counsel to members of parliament. He said, look, you cannot at this time abandon the constituents who accorded you the mandate. Correct, yeah. That go to your constituents. It's more important and a priority than going to New York or coming back <laughs> to the country and going to Mombasa. But you look at the Jubilee Party MPs in 2017 on the eve of the elections and uh, the former majority leader, who was in the company of other Jubilee MPs on the presence of parliament called out Judge Odunga, for example, for making decisions which they sail against <clears> the executive. <throat> Will he then give this clarion call to members of parliament to respect this institution, regardless of whoever makes the decision, and that this is for posterity and to deepen our democratic credentials? I like the word you've used, posterity. Yeah. And you, if you see where the judiciary sits, Prof will tell you, judiciary is the only place where me and you and everybody else right go to seek justice. That's why I'm saying it's a very integral, it's a very important function when it comes to government. Because we may not run to the police, we may not run to the executive, we may not even run to parliament. Mm -hmm. The Mamambogas and everybody else, they expect judiciary to habit or to be the final arbiter on the cases that they bring. So this is where we take our grievances. Okay. So they must be sound, and they must not get any interference from inside or outside. So I think when you talk about uh, uh, our parliamentarians, yeah. You know, the judiciary has ruled uh, several unfavorable things. Mm -hmm. He among them, the CDF, yes. which I hope, you know, the president was saying, I hope he comes back because uh, it really has helped uh, counties and Kenya at large. Uh, the bursary schemes that we know, you know, building schools here and there, just, you know, uh, development of other things within the constituency, which has been huge. But I don't think, Ayub, we need to uh, identify any group okay. in any way, shape or form. Uh, who should follow uh, judicial matters uh, uh, closely okay. or announcements or pronouncements okay. um, as opposed to others. No. When the judiciary speaks, whether it's parliament, whether it's the Senate, whether it's the executive, they have no option than to take heed from the okay. judiciary. Uh, Prof, then, does the political class understand the mood music amongst the Kenyan public and the importance thereof of... Uh, how institutions ought to be working to be functional in a democracy? And do you think that will forthcome from the current crop of leadership, notwithstanding their political subscription? It's very interesting. Uh, and again, picking from what uh, Mutuma is saying, um, you know, the country was, uh, was sliding away from uh, the constitutional arrangement True. of our institutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you, if you think about um, um, particularly the BBI and the, and the handshake, um, there, there was quite a lot of uh, crossing over. Uh, there, there were even suggestions, for example, of having uh, uh, um, a hybrid, hybrid system mm. where the, uh, the executive would actually draw uh, his membership partly from parliament mm. and partly from outside, for example. There's uh, the one that has been said about uh, the judiciary and so on. Um, you remember again that during that period, uh, Kenya did not have an oversight. And, 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 and again, Ayub, people assume that uh, oversight is uh, mm. a function of the opposition. Okay. It is actually, the, uh, we actually establish very, very big and robust oversight institutions. Yeah, uh, so the, the entire parliament is meant to oversight the judiciary. The entire Senate is meant to oversight the counties. Okay. And then, you know, within that, for example, uh, the minority, even have more specific oversight roles. Okay. Um, and, 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 and many, the, the, the one that I normally li like is to, 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 to cite is um, the issue of debt, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, who decides uh, how much debt uh, you know, government, government gets? We, we actually have um, uh, uh, um, control of budget, and we also have parliament uh, itself. Okay. Uh, in terms of government plans, in terms of who, who, who gives the president eventually uh, you know, the money to spend and so on. But then what you, what we, what you saw in the last five years, it, it was building slowly, mm -hmm. uh, was a situation where um, the executive was usurping powers of these other institutions so that a lot of uh, fellows didn't even know, particularly parliament, let me highlight parliament, they didn't even know their role when it, when it came to oversight in government, when it came to expenditure, when it, when it came to planning and so on and so forth. And, 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 and basically this led to the executive more or less run amok. And um, I think it's very good now that we are saying, look here, what were these institutions actually meant to, meant to, 
to be and okay. what, what are they meant to do based on the constitution. Mm. And uh, can we allow them uh, the autonomy? Because the executive can usurp as the, uh, the incoming president, in fact, the president okay. uh, said yesterday, mm -hmm. um, you know, the executive can unwittingly usurp powers of independent institutions and nobody would even know. You know, uh, the issue of IG that has, uh, has just been highlighted. Okay. What does it mean if you don't actually, um, you know, uh, make the IG the, the accounting officer? Okay. What does it mean when the judiciary has no fund, uh, for example? Mm -hmm. Those are soft ways of usurping uh, the autonomy mm -hmm. of these uh, entities. What does it mean when uh, the majority um, is basically considered to be an extension of the executive so that uh, instead of doing the, the actual role, okay. they're actually marketing the executive inside of parliament. Okay. Yeah, so I think if, if the president, um, if there's the one thing that he can actually do for Kenyans, restore these institutions to the default settings mm. on the basis of the constitution. Okay. Yeah, because we're starting to drift away. Okay, but Prof, when you mentioned independent institutions and you have talked about the office of... Uh the Inspector General of Police, that uh, right. the Deputy President, then now President, yeah. said um, ought to be independent financially, right. no need for dependence on the Office of the President for financial or cash flow. But when you mention Parliament, yes. it's, it's the institution, yes. and then they are the occupants. Yes. We have 416 members in the bicameral house. Right. When you mention the executives usurping of powers, yes, there has been the exogenous pressure over time upon parliament right. for favorable decisions. Right. But do the members understand the capacity that they bear or it's a case of incapacitating an existing capacity right. amongst the 416 Kenyans who, whom we have given the mandate to represent us, legislate for us, and also talk about issues that affect them on energy? Yes, and uh, thanks Ayub for bringing up this matter because uh, uh, a lot of parliamentarians and uh, and and uh, a lot of parliamentarians, parliament and there's a lot of evidence there, don't even seem to know what their role is uh, collectively. I mean, many don't go to the house. Uh, many imagine that uh, their role is, uh, you know, building those uh, CDF classrooms uh, back in the village. Uh, they they don't actually understand that uh, it's part of the bigger role um, in governance uh, to do a lot of things that that would then align. Um, you know, the way government functions um, from, a, it's not just expenditure, it is this same parliament that approves all, uh, uh, all top employees, mm -hmm. you know, within the executive and so on. And um, uh, linking this with, uh, with the president, uh, he didn't make that in the speech yesterday, but uh, he made this uh, 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 statement a, a week or so ago, uh, when he was meeting the parliamentarians, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, there's need to capacity build these parliamentarians. Because many of them are just nice people okay. uh, who are liked by, by the villagers and have been voted. Many have no clue, actually, you know, what their role is. And uh, this, this should have been the role of political parties, but I liked it that um, uh, the president highlighted that uh, particularly for the Kenya Kwanzaa um, uh, parliamentarians, mm -hmm. because those are the ones he has uh, uh, some sort of leverage over that they're going to get into training so that they, they start understanding yes. what their, their actual role is. Mm -hmm. so, so that even if they're doing some of these peripheral roles, then they understand that um, they're, they're such a central pillar in governance of this country. And if they did their jobs well, in fact, people will be e even happier with them. They can actually align expenditure to the extent okay. that uh, you know the people they represent get the requisite services okay. that uh, the executive is meant to be providing. Thank you. And uh, Gabriel, before we come to the cost of living crisis and how the new president will navigate around that, mm -hmm. upon, of course, uh, establishing of the problems which he says uh, bedevil the agriculture sector, a uh, prof mentioned political parties, and uh, it's important we have them as institutions and thereof appreciating the cropping up of the many political parties when we repeal Section 2A of the Constitution in 1991, then the elections in 1992. But uh, just the last sittings of Parliament, Senator Okia Omtata, clearly mentioned out that for him, it's public interest. Correct. That he's going to be voting on the basis of what <clears throat> affects Kenyans, not the political party. And how then important is it for the members of the bicameral house to understand where the line drawn is drawn between public interest issues and what the political party wants, and, that can, and can that be attained? Uh, Ayub, if you look at uh, Article uh, 95 of uh, the Constitution that deals with uh, the roles and the responsibilities of the members of parliament, uh, if you go through that whole chapter, there's nowhere where you'll find that uh, an individual must actually toe the line toward the party things. It's all about 
what Kenyans, mm -hmm. the kind of fairness, the kind of representation, and most importantly, the kind of laws that they must make. They must go to ensure that the Kenyan people are the ones that are served, not their parties. Now, uh, when you bring in um, the party issue, I saw when uh, they were, the parties were actually gearing to go for the Speaker and the Speaker of the Senate, there were so many party members who did not toe the party lines. And that is something that I would really appreciate if it continues, okay. because that is how you strengthen a democracy. If what is being proposed on the floor of the House is sensible, is well-meaning for the nation, then don't talk to the party lines. I know you have that, you feel the leverage of the party that sponsored you to parliament, but does that, what does that do to the common monarchy? Remember, it is not really necessarily your party that has put you to parliament that pays your salary. Mm -hmm. It is me, Prof, and every other Kenyan. So that in itself should give you an element of relief that when you're doing the right thing, and I repeat, underline the right thing for Kenya, you should be well guided and well cushioned by the people who have put you there. So that is the first thing. I also like, uh, you remember when uh, the deputy president a few weeks ago, <laughs> where, mm -hmm. where we have to get used to the president, uh, <laughs> Honorable William Ruto, uh, when he said, and he was telling parliamentarians, with the kind of roles that you will play, remember one thing, remember to go back to your constituents. Okay. Prof has said something which is very true. Mm -hmm. Most of these people, when they get elected, they never go back to their, yeah. and they will do that very late in the day when the elections have started. And you know, you no longer understand the terrain anymore. A lot of things have gone on. The people who elected you don't even see you. You don't engage, you don't communicate. And then when five years are over, you want to go back there with a few goodies, hoping that they will re-elect you again. And what the president was trying to tell them, you have a busy schedule, yes. You'll be flying from this place and then going to okay. this retreat and mm -hmm. coming back and, you know. But remember the people who elected you. Make sure you go back to the constituency. So I think um, as, uh, as, as Parliament convinces, uh, I hope they will do the right thing. Ayub, this nation will be built by people who have the conscience mainly our leaders okay. who have the conscience of doing the right thing. And that's why we keep praying okay. for them. On the Moving on, Gabriel, but just seeking some clarity. You mentioned it's important MPs support uh, the party that sponsors them or sponsored them to parliament uh, for the public good. What if then the party and uh, the leadership of the party is not championing for the good of the country? What will the MPs do then? Uh, no, no, no. Let me put this again. It is not the party anymore. And I, sometimes it's good to divorce. Yes, the party has sponsored you, and I agree. And you feel a certain element of, you know, this is the party that brought me in. But imagine when the party, your party vacates from the promises they made. Mm -hmm. In other words, what they are forcing you to do is what we saw repeat, you know, last week. We saw, the repeat, we saw that repeat in the house when some members walked out mm -hmm. and some were left. You know why? To do the very same thing that they got elected to. Thank there you. is, we have to differentiate between a party and what is right and what is wrong. Yes, the party can sponsor the to parliament, but that does not mean that see, just because you're in parliament, you should go with what they were saying. There's a great American man prof okay. who once said, when it comes to matter style, yep. Swim with the current. Thank you. When it comes to matters principle, okay. stand like a rock. That is what I would tell Thank our you. members of parliament. Yes, Prof. Yes. And just to add briefly onto that, you, you see the, uh, the design of a constitution and the democracy is such that you actually represent the people directly and then use the party to organize you know, your, your issues. So you are more, more like like-minded people. If you compare this with South Africa, for example, mm -hmm. where they use party lists, uh, you, people elect parties. So they don't actually elect individuals. So you, in the South African situation, you go in to represent the party. So the party can withdraw you. Mm. But in, in the Kenyan situation, you don't represent the party. So the party cannot withdraw Correct. Uh, a member of parliament. But remember, we also have the recall clause yes. in the Kenyan situation. Mm -hmm. But the recall clause in the Kenyan situation is a reserve of the Kenyan people. Yes. Yeah, so I think, I, I think we need to be very clear here that uh, 
Parties are useful. They're useful to organize uh, our issues together and lobby and mm. do all this. Mm. They're useful, for example, in terms of those broader oversights uh, that we're talking about. Right. Uh, they're, they're useful. You know, when I, when I look at a, a bigger agenda, it, it is very difficult to push for that agenda as an individual. Mm. So parties then become very, very useful mm. in that regard. However, you don't represent the party in, um, in, in the architecture of the Kenyan constitution. Okay. You represent the people directly. Okay. Yes, and Ayub, very quickly, if you see, if you, if you are to be honest, the fall of Jubilee, both in parliament and in government, actually stemmed out through, of, through victimization of their members. That is how Jubilee, uh, you know, w went down. Okay. Because some of their members wanted to do what is right, but the party wanted to stick to these uh, gargantuan laws that you must throw to the line. That actually became a detriment to that particular party. Victimization of members when they want to do the right thing. And, and that, that is the opposite play, opposite of the pledge they made in September 2016 when they formed the Jubilee Party, folding up of many political parties, exactly. uh, pledging to, to end ethnic balkanization, unifying the country, even copying the model of the Chinese Communist Party, yes. which celebrated a centenary, 100 years, exactly. in 2021 under President Xi Jinping, and also the South African model, right. where President Jacob Zuma was a casualty of yes. a decision made by the party. Right. But we're still uh, living to see how political parties will be further cemented and founded on the solid foundation right. of ideologies and policies. Shifting gears, Prof, and this is very important to mention, the economy. And uh, yesterday, the president, the new president, talked about the provision of 1.4 million bags of fertilizer at a reduced cost of 3,500 Kenya shillings per 50 kg, established the Hasla Fund and the Ministry of Cooperatives for Small and Medium Enterprises, and work on the new credit score rating to, el to eliminate the CRB blacklisting of creditors. We'll be coming to that subject later. But this is the economic part, Prof. Then to take off from the current position, how can the new president reorient the country's economic standards into resource-mobilized, productivity-led, export-oriented economy for job creation and uh, rather rebooting the country, not only post the pandemic, but also the concerns Kenyans have had during the election period? No, thank you, Ayub, and uh, big English there. <laughs> <laughs> But I fully understand it. But, uh, uh, I think, I think um, uh, in the president's speech, uh, and I liked again the way he organized his speech, because um, he, he was addressing very many different issues around the economy and not addressing them as one thing. Mm -hmm. you know, um, so, so, so you could actually put a number of issues that he raised as uh, fundamentally economic. Um, and, and also linking, linking quite a number of um, um, you know, short to medium term measures to the broader economy. So uh, I, I'll, I'll just highlight a few. For example, his approach to, 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 to subsidy mm -hmm. has implications on the economy. Mm -hmm. And he did actually mention that, look here, why are we spending 280 billion on fuel subsidy, yes. um, which is the same as government's development budget? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a very interesting and stark um, comparison there. And, and, and of course, uh, he, he steered clear of, um, of um, actually you know, suggesting these short term measures, um, uh, like the, the subsidies, for example. Then, of course, he, he went ahead to talk about uh, jobs and to talk about financial inclusion within that particular arrangement and then quickly moved into the Hustler Fun. Fund. Mm -hmm. And again, the way he approached it was, um, I was just cracking a joke with, with somebody uh, in the studio here that, uh, you know, they thought that they would get Hustler Fund today in their accounts. Yes. Uh, but he's starting <laughs> to, to realize that, you know, it is actually not about uh, the Panadol and feel good mentality. That yes, um, you need to wait, but we need to have a system that actually works. Uh, this has been questioned, but, 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 but I, I don't mind it because I mean, we've had a situation where these people cannot absorb the different funds that are given to them. Okay. Whether you look at the youth <coughs> fund and, uh, and uh, those are the, the women's fund, those are small, small funds that uh, used to exist in Uru's mm. time. And, uh, and I think linking this with the cooperative and elevating that all the way to a ministry is a very interesting way of saying, look, yeah, let young people organize differently uh, in, the, in the SMEs, mm. in, the, in the cooperatives and so on. Cooperatives have a bigger absorptive capacity. Yes. And, and the country already has uh, you know, issues around, uh, around um, uh, 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 you know, a history with cooperatives mm -hmm. that, that can actually be ma made to work. And then uh, uh, with it, with, in, in that same breath, he, he talked about uh, business environment. 
Um, and, and you could see there that, uh, that it's starting to, to say that, OK, fine, um, the, the country must still be business friendly. When he was talking about the business friendliness, he was not necessarily talking, okay. talking about hustlers. Mm -hmm. He was talking about big time investors for export um, and, and, and that level of, um, of um, you know, of the economy is uh, is talking about the World Bank sort of parameters that make uh, you know countries uh, to be uh, to be res uh, resilient from okay. a business perspective. Okay. Uh, th the last point I want to make there quickly is that, uh, and I think that's something that that uh, uh, um, uh, Kenya Kwanzaa have gotten right, and they need to push it. Yes. Uh, and, and this is actually coupling our our agricultural produ production with uh, with uh, our economy and in industrial production because largely we are we are an agricultural economy. Mm -hmm. So 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 um, you know starting to focus on industrialization too far away from agriculture basically means that we don't even understand you know the most important value chain that uh, that will impact people. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course it, it, it didn't exploit in full, but. Uh, but, but we know is in the plan, and then of course he started by by talking about uh, food production quickly in the short term, okay. subsidizing fertilizers and so on, okay. and then of course eventually linking this thing with okay. um, uh, agribusiness. Yes, yeah, so I think I think we're starting to see a nuance of uh, of what this economic model uh, will look will look like. It's going to be a continuation of what we had that that has. You know, led us to some sort of economic growth, but at the same time, you know, have this balance that then enables this eco uh, economy to be felt by everyone. So, so based on what he said yesterday, if he's going to yep. proceed mm -hmm. that way, we could actually see some uh, some positives with okay. the economy. Uh, uh, Gabriel, when he launched his manifesto, the, what he called the plan, then deputy president, now president, um, he mentioned, for example, the word fund about 10 to 11 times. And, and this is very key because he was very focused on the economy. But when he mentions the Hustler Fund, <coughs> does it then, by, by virtue of its creation, lessen or rather end the firm grip in terms of the bureaucratic burdens that the Kenyan people face in terms of economic empowerment? Well, well utilized, or oh, by all means it will. It will, if well utilized, again, you go to uh, a proper utilization, uh, the aspect of accountability and the act, uh, the, the element of uh, responsibility in when it comes to spending. But when you talk about, you know, the general, the general facet Ayub, of the economy and the uh, what we were discussing yesterday with Prof, when you look at our GDP and the uh, food basket, uh, the correlation, I think what it comes down to is the affordability element of the common one inchi, and that is what has been hurting. But now I want to tie you Ayub, into two things. When you talk about the economy, you know, actually, apart from the mismanagement that we were talking about, you had even uh, Rigade, uh, the Deputy President Rigade Gashagua we'll talked about it yesterday. Uh, and yes, maybe people have chastised him how he did it, but there were key points that he actually communicated. And we just need to be alive to those facts. Uh, one is that, yes, we, we have a debt burden. And we look at that debt burden that needs to be aligned. And we must think hard about it. What are we going to do? Because it's moving up, it's yelling up, uh, and it's not getting any easier. So it needs a serious and an immediate arrest uh, to formulate a, a, a good policy of how do we start paying this debt back. So when you put that on one side, you come in and uh, shelve this other idea of uh, subsidies that were given mainly on the fertilizer. Mm -hmm. When you look at uh, something else that is quite as critical, yeah. uh, Prof, and this is the 600 billion owed in pending yeah. bills, mm -hmm. pending bills yeah. that there's actually a direct mm -hmm. relation to the food basket because when that money is paid out prof did something he needs to spend that money he needs to pay a place where he's been uh, taking unga he needs so the Food, the, the chain again needs to be activated and 600 billion ayub is a lot of money he goes on to talk about something else which is also key and is also quite related to what we are talking about the economy uh, and the food basket and that is increasing uh, the banking, uh, yeah, from one million to, and he, and he mentioned yesterday. The president mentioned yesterday. You still have people who are putting money, money. In, at, at home. That money needs to come into the economy. And I guarantee you, if we are going to do those things right, quite fast, uh, even given the issue that we saw with the drought coming in, I can guarantee you, we are going to arrest a situation, and we are going to. You, you will. 
some people will start noticing it. Yes. The legs of Akina Prof and the people okay. he has employed mm -hmm. will start noticing a change. Exactly. There will be a change. So we go back to the effectiveness of all the rafts that uh, the president talked about yesterday. They are in one way or the other related. We just need to find out what do we tease right now to ensure that Prof is able to pay yes. the employees that he has okay. and using the money that he's owed somewhere else will ease in the burden of him giving or putting money in the hands of many. Okay, more or less uh, currency circulation within the economy. Yes, Prof, you have a point before we go on a break, come back and finish. Yeah, I think I, I also just wanted to highlight there that, I mean, for the first time, actually, we, we bring in the issue of subsidy and, and what it actually Correct. means. And 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 and, uh, and he explained it. I mean, uh, he explained that quite quite well and quite clearly. That look, I mean, you are getting this money, and um, you know you're, you're putting in huge subsidies here. Correct. Those, those subsidies are actually going to are going to pr uh, private hands. Correct. Uh, while on the other hand, you are again taxing the same person. He didn't use those those, those same yeah. words, but you're taxing the same person so that uh, you know so so. You are taxing the same person and then you subsidize them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, like the fuel situation, 60% of the fuel uh, 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 costs yes. is, is tax. So you tax me and then you say the price is too high, then you subsidize me. So, <laughs> so, so in, in this convoluted uh, situation, you are actually getting money from me and giving it to private hands. Yes. And, uh, and are you, what you're asking uh, very simply is that why don't you just remove the taxes? Then you don't need to subsidize me. <laughs> <laughs> or okay. rationalize the taxes. Then you don't have, so we have an irrational system where now all these other yeah. you, you know, shadowy players mm. end up being the beneficiaries extracting from the system okay. and not adding in value to it. Okay, thank you, Prof. And thank you, Gabriel. When we get back from the break, uh, touching on uh, also the remaining aspects in uh, the itemized yesterday right. items and areas by the President William Ruto, including the establishment of a task force that uh, will review the competency-based curriculum right. and the acceleration of the transfer of the outstanding functions and resources to the counties we are under the devolved system of governance ushered in in 2013 after the first government was elected under the current constitutional dispensation and what this portends for the 47 devolved units across uh, the country and whether this will spur economic growth from the counties and support Complement the economic growth in terms of our GDP, that is the growth domestic product. The hashtag on Twitter is Daybreak at Citizen TV Kenya at IU Publicade. And when we get back from the break, we touch on those respective issues with Professor Alfred Omenya and Gabriel Mudome. Stay tuned, we're back with more.